Ever feel like your brain has two settings? Like total chill mode and then bam, last minute panic mode. Oh, tell me about it. Well, that's exactly what we're diving into today. The hows and whys of procrastination. Get ready to be fascinated by what's going on in that head of yours. We're dissecting this book, Beat Procrastination. And let me tell you, it goes way deeper than your typical self-help stuff. Right. It's not just about making to-do lists. What I found really interesting is how it digs into procrastination as this battle in your brain, like a face-off between instant gratification and your long-term goals. Okay. I'm intrigued. Paint me a picture here. Yeah. Are we talking like a tiny boxing ring in my head? Well, it's a good way to think about it. Imagine your limbic system, right? The part of your brain that's all about pleasure and taking it easy. That's most of my brain, to be honest. Well, that part's going toe to toe with your prefrontal cortex. That's yeah. the more evolved part, the one that's all about planning and self-control. So it's basically my urge to binge watch a whole season of something versus that little voice saying, hey, maybe finish that project first. And for the record, which one usually wins? Asking for a friend, obviously. Let's just say the limbic system scores a lot of points. It's wired to prioritize those immediate rewards, thinking about things long term, not so much. And honestly, that makes sense from an evolutionary standpoint. I mean, think about it seeking pleasure and avoiding pain. That kept our ancestors alive. So you're saying my brain is basically wired like our early ancestors who were more worried about like finding food and shelter than meeting deadlines. Hmm. Strangely reassuring. In a way, yeah. But it goes a bit deeper than that. The book dives into this whole thing with dopamine, you know, the brain's reward chemical. When we finally finish something, especially under pressure, that rush of dopamine, it's like we're reinforcing that procrastination cycle, rewarding our brains for operating in crisis mode. Ah, okay, so that's where the problem starts. We get hooked on those last minute dopamine hits, even if they come with a side of stress and exhaustion. Exactly, and the book doesn't sugarcoat it. Beat procrastination really lays out how this whole dance with deadlines can impact us in some serious ways. All right, hit me with it. What's the dark side of procrastination? Well, the first thing, and this might seem obvious, but it's huge, is just bad time management. And I don't just mean deadlines. It's more like how constantly playing catch up affects your overall productivity. Right. It's like you're always running late for a train. Eventually, you're going to miss a connection and your whole schedule is shot. Exactly. And the book takes it a step further, connecting this to missed opportunities. Okay. Think about it. If you're always in firefighting mode, you might miss out on new opportunities. Or maybe you just don't have the bandwidth to go after them. It's like you're so busy clearing your inbox that you missed that important email about, like, a promotion or something. Ouch. Yeah, that one stings a little. <laughs> okay, what else? What's next on the list of procrastination pitfalls? So... The third point the book really digs into is how procrastination can totally derail your long-term goals. Like, it uses this example of a talented writer who dreams of publishing a novel, right? But they just keep putting off the actual writing. They're stuck in this cycle of low-paying gigs, always feeling a step behind. Oh, I know that feeling. It's like <laughs> they're standing on the platform, watching their dream train leave the station, yeah. and they're just frozen there, unable to get on board. That's rough. And I'm guessing this all ties into the fourth consequence, right? The hit to our self-esteem. Absolutely. Procrastination often fuels this vicious cycle of negative self-talk. We beat ourselves up for procrastinating and then we feel guilty, maybe even ashamed. And that makes us, ironically, even more likely to procrastinate in the future. It's like this self-sabotaging loop. So we've covered the why, you know, the whole brain science behind procrastination and the ouch, the potential consequences if it takes over our lives. But before we spiral into a pit of despair over every unfinished to-do list, is there a way out? Can we actually tame this procrastination beast? Beat procrastination seems to think so. So there's hope for us chronic procrastinators, right? Spill the beans. What's the secret? Well, the good news is beat procrastination lays out this really practical three-step process. And it starts with something that seems obvious, but is actually so important. You got to admit you're procrastinating. Like, really acknowledge it. Okay. That seems pretty straightforward, mm. but I'm guessing there's more to it than just saying, yep, I'm a procrastinator. What does the book suggest we actually do about it? So it gives you this checklist of six signs that are like classic red flags, things that might mean you're a chronic procrastinator. Like, for example, have you ever found yourself prioritizing like the least important stuff over those big, hairy tasks that really matter? Um, you, you mean like when I suddenly decide to reorganize my entire desk drawer? instead of starting that presentation that's due tomorrow. Yeah, that sounds a little too familiar. 
Bingo. That's exactly what we're talking about. Another big one is spending way too much time on stuff that's not really essential, like endlessly rereading emails or getting sucked into a research rabbit hole that has nothing to do with the task at hand. Okay. Yep. I'm starting to feel a little personally attacked by this book. Anything else I should be worried about? Let's see. Oh, the book also talks about this tendency to just push those crucial tasks day after day, always looking for that perfect time or feeling to get started, which, let's be real, never actually comes. And then there's the classic habit of making excuses for not taking action. I work better under pressure. That's my go-to excuse. See, you get it. It's not just about being busy. It's about being honest with ourselves about how we're actually using our time and energy. Self-awareness, that's the first step. Got it. So once we've fessed up to our procrastination patterns, what's next? All right. So step two, according to beat procrastination, is understanding your why. It's like putting on your detective hat and figuring out the root cause of those delay tactics. Ooh, I love this. Time to channel my inner Sherlock Holmes and get to the bottom of my procrastination mysteries. But where do I even start? What kind of clues should I be looking for? Well, the book has some great questions to ask yourself. Like, is it a fear of failure that's holding you back? Are you a perfectionist who struggles to even get started because it never feels good enough? Or maybe you just really, really dread the task itself. The fear of failure thing definitely resonates with me. I've noticed that I sometimes put things off because I'm terrified of, like, not meeting my own expectations or disappointing other people. That is so common. And the book talks about how fear can be this huge driver of procrastination. Like, we avoid taking action because it feels safer than risking failure or judgment. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But how do we actually break free from that fear-driven procrastination cycle? Mm. Any tips? Beat procrastination suggests breaking those scary tasks down into smaller, less intimidating steps. It's much less overwhelming that way. And focus on making progress, not on being perfect. Remember, done is better than perfect. That's a good mantra. I need to write that down somewhere. What about those people who are just drowning in a sea of to-dos? Like, they're not necessarily afraid. They're just overwhelmed by the sheer volume of stuff they have to do. Yeah, that's where disorganization comes in. The book suggests creating a clear, prioritized, to-do list, you know, get everything out of your head and onto paper, and breaking down those massive, overwhelming projects into smaller, more manageable chunks. Ah, chunking. Chunking is my jam. It makes any task feel less daunting. But what about those people who actually thrive under pressure? The ones yeah. who, like, magically produce their best work in the 11th hour, should they just, like, lean into that? And that's where things get interesting. Beat procrastination actually introduces this idea of strategic procrastination. Wait, hold on. Are you saying there's a good side to procrastination? That's exactly what I'm saying. The book argues that if you do it right, strategic procrastination can actually be a really powerful way to boost your productivity. Have you ever noticed that sometimes that pressure of a deadline can actually light a fire under you? Like you suddenly become super focused and efficient? Oh, absolutely. Something about that ticking clock just kicks my brain into overdrive. But how do you harness that deadline-driven energy without letting it control your entire life? It's all about being intentional. The book suggests strategically scheduling some tasks closer to their deadlines to take advantage of that surge of focus. It's about understanding your own rhythms and working with them, not against them. So it's like you're a conductor of your own time, orchestrating when those last minute crescendos hit. Exactly. Beat Procrastination outlines four key ways to use this strategic procrastination to your advantage. You ready for this? Hit me with it. I'm ready to become a procrastination Jedi master. Okay, so strategy number one is harnessing that energy boost we were just talking about. If you know you work well under pressure, go ahead and schedule some tasks closer to their deadlines. Second, the book talks about using procrastination to actually improve your focus and minimize distractions. Wait, so you're saying instead of fighting those urges to, like, check my phone or scroll through social media, mm -hmm. I should just give in to them strategically? Not quite. It's more about recognizing that our brains just need breaks sometimes, right? So instead of forcing yourself to power through when you feel your focus waning, just intentionally step away and then come back to the task with fresh eyes. Okay, yeah, I can see how that could work. What's strategy number three? So the book really emphasizes the importance of prioritizing tasks effectively and, get this, delegating strategically. By being picky about what you take on and when you take it on, you can actually use procrastination as a tool for, like, a better work-life balance. So it's not just about getting things done. It's about getting the right things done at the right time. Which leads us to strategy number four. 
Creating a better work-life balance. How does beat procrastination suggest we do that? Well, it argues that strategically delaying certain tasks, particularly the ones that aren't mission critical, can free up mental space for other areas of your life, like spending time with people you care about, doing hobbies, or just taking care of yourself. It's like giving yourself permission to hit the pause button on your to-do list to just recharge your batteries. Sounds amazing, right? Yeah. But I have to ask, is there a catch? This whole strategic procrastination thing sounds like it could easily backfire if you're not careful. Oh, you're absolutely right. It's a delicate dance for sure. Beat procrastination makes it clear that you have to be really self-aware and honest with yourself. Are you truly leveraging procrastination strategically or is it actually controlling you? So how do we walk that line? How do we know if we're strategically delaying or just headed for a procrastination meltdown? Well, the book gives you a few red flags to watch out for. One is if you're finding that procrastination is actually creating more stress than it's relieving, like if you're constantly overwhelmed anxious, maybe even losing sleep because you're always playing catch up. That's a sign something needs to change. Right. It's like that feeling of being on a hamster wheel. You're running and running, but not actually getting anywhere. Exactly. And another warning sign is if the quality of your work starts to suffer because you're always rushing to meet deadlines. Strategic procrastination shouldn't mean sacrificing quality. It's about being smart with your time to get your best work done. So working smarter, not just harder, even if that means strategically hitting the pause button on certain tasks, I like it. But, you know, beat procrastination goes even further, and it introduces this surprisingly simple but powerful tool to fight procrastination, the power of saying no. Tell me more about that. It's so true. The book makes this point that one of the most effective ways to deal with procrastination is to prevent it in the first place. And a big part of that is being way more selective about what we allow into our lives, you know, what we put on our to-do lists. So it's not just about managing time. It's about managing our energy and focus, too. Yeah. Saying no to the things that drain us or don't really align with our goals, that frees up space for what truly matters. But that's easier said than done, right? Saying no can be so hard, especially in a culture that's like, go, 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 be busy all the time. Oh, absolutely. Beat procrastination even talks about how we've got this ingrained yes man mentality. Like we're so afraid to decline requests because we don't want to seem unhelpful or disappoint someone. We worry about missing out on opportunities. That fear of saying no to extra projects, even if it means sacrificing your weekends or evenings. Been there. Exactly, but here's the thing. The book makes the point that saying no isn't selfish. It's about setting healthy boundaries and prioritizing your own well-being, your own productivity. It's like no is not a negative word. It's a way to protect your time and energy for the things that really matter to you. It's like you're the guardian of your to-do list. Right? <laughs> you're not letting it become a dumping ground for everyone else's priorities. <laughs> and speaking of priorities, beat procrastination also dives into some pretty inspiring stories about people who've actually beaten procrastination. Yes. It profiles these productivity masters and their insights are gold. Like there's Mike Vardy, this productivity guru. He talks about creating modes for different types of work. Okay, modes. What are those and how do they help with procrastination? So basically, he suggests that you set aside specific times, maybe certain times of day or even days of the week for certain types of tasks. So maybe you have a communication mode where you're just focused on emails, messages, that kind of thing. And then you have a deep work mode for those tasks that need like your full attention. And then maybe a creative mode for brainstorming or projects that need more flexibility. So it's like compartmentalizing your work into these modes. So you're less likely to get sidetracked or feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. by this mountain of to-dos. Exactly. Another productivity pro the book talks about is Darren Rouse. He's all about designing your week around your energy levels. So schedule your toughest tasks for those times when you naturally feel the most alert and focused. That's brilliant. I'm definitely more of a morning person when it comes to tackling those big challenging tasks. Right. And then for those who struggle with saying no, the book shares some advice from Eric Fisher, an entrepreneur and author. He's a big advocate for delegation, reminding us that we don't have to do it all ourselves. When you learn to delegate effectively, you free up your time and energy to focus on your strength. Delegation is a game changer, but it can be hard to let go of control sometimes. Oh, for sure. And the book acknowledges that. It stresses how important it is to find people you trust, communicate clearly what you need, that kind of thing. It's about building a support system that allows you to work smarter, not harder. Love it. And finally, we have Beat Procrastination, delving into this link between procrastination and mindfulness. 
They share some fascinating insights from meditation expert Tony Stubblebine. What's his take on overcoming procrastination? Well, Stubblebine believes that you have to address procrastination at its root, which he says is in our subconscious. He's a big believer in meditation, saying that if you develop a regular practice, you become more aware of your thoughts and feelings, even the ones that trigger your procrastination habits. So it's about cultivating that self-awareness, learning to observe those procrastination impulses without judgment. Yes. It's about recognizing that procrastination is often a symptom of something deeper, like emotional patterns or thought patterns. And mindfulness can help us untangle those patterns and make more conscious choices about how we spend our time and energy. This has been such an insightful deep dive into the world of procrastination. We've explored the science behind it, the potential downsides, and even some surprising upsides. But I think what really resonated with me was that final thought in beat procrastination. It's this idea of approaching procrastination with curiosity instead of judgment. What a concept. Right. It's such a powerful shift in perspective. Yeah. Instead of beating ourselves up for procrastinating, what if we saw it as an opportunity for some self-discovery? Like those procrastination urges are trying to tell us something. Maybe we should stop silencing them and start really listening. Yeah. That's something that's <laughs> really wrong. Absolutely. Procrastination is something we all deal with, but it doesn't have to rule our lives. When we understand the why behind it, when we have some practical strategies to deal with it, we can even harness its power for good. We can all become masters of our own time and productivity.